All right, welcome to this lesson on self-transcendence. Yesterday we talked about self-transcendence on more of a micro level, like when you sit down to meditate, how the mind becomes happy and what the keys are for that. And now we'll talk about it on more of a macro level because Siddhartha Gautama, the historical Buddha, also discovered that there was kind of a, a larger chain of events that lead to lead to happiness in the mind throughout the day. So in some ways, this is about how to live a happy life. And we can do so by training the mind. Often in the pursuit of a happy life, we try to get things in the external world and put it in perfect order. So we might think that a better job or a new house or the perfect partner is the key to a happy life. But what the wisdom tradition said and this is both Western, like the Stoics, the Roman and Greek philosophers, as well as Eastern traditions like yoga and Buddhism, is that virtue is a big piece of the good, happy life. And this is also going to be the key puzzle piece here for a happy mind throughout the day. So yesterday we talked about this formula on a micro level, and it went from eliminating the five hindrances from the mind, these major prediction errors in the brain that cause us to worry and cause us to want this and that. And that leads to gladness. And then that leads to joy. And that leads to tranquility. That leads to contentment. And then samadhi. And then wisdom. Well, in this macro formula, the first piece of the puzzle, instead of being eliminating the five hindrances, is virtue. So the new formula starts with virtue and that leads to gladness and then joy, tranquility, contentment, samadhi, and wisdom. They might think, how does virtue, how does like being a good person somehow make the mind glad? But there's been all sorts of research on this. First, I might just ask you to recall in your, in your own mind a time when you did something like a random act of kindness or you just helped somebody out, out that you saw needed it. And then how did that make your mind feel? It's just kind of naturally rewarding. Like the 16th president of the U.S., Abraham Lincoln, said that when I do good, I feel good. And when I do bad, I feel bad. That is my religion. And I like this quote because it's just kind of, it's so obvious, but it's easy to overlook that these, our conscience tells us what's good and bad often. And this has a direct impact on the mind. We've already talked about the, the neuroscience of virtue a little bit, but just to recap, serotonin, this neuromodulator in the brain that's linked to the kind of contentment playlist, has been found to increase charitable donating. So it seems like the more content we are, then the more generous we are. Then there's kind of a positive feedback loop. In a 2017 nature study, it was found that generosity is linked to happiness. And the, the neuroimaging data here suggested that giving actually activates the brain's reward system, which is known in psychology as a helper's high. So we, we, so doing good makes us feel good in that sense. And then we're also, the better we feel, the more likely we are to make virtuous choices. On the flip side of that, Dishonesty, for example, is linked to the wanting circuitry in the brain, like the nucleus accumbens. And the more that we anticipate rewards, the more likely, the more temptation there is. So in general, research on virtue suggests it's important for pro-social behavior and human flourishing and personality development. And it's linked to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is this mode of being that's the opposite of the fight or flight response. You know, it's very relaxed and calm. So physically, we become more content. And I think that's part of that chain reaction I mentioned, where virtue makes the mind glad and then joyful, and then body becomes tranquil. And there's this contentment of mind that goes into a state of samadhi, of collectedness. So we can be more aware in that state because we're not feeling bad about ourselves and caught up in our regrets and worries. All right, so how do we set off this chain reaction to begin with? We do a good act, let's say, and then we really relish in that feeling because often it can slip right by without us even noticing like, hey, I just did a really good thing. 
to take time to sink into that feeling and enjoy what we're doing for somebody else, we'll notice there's this kind of like subtle bliss to it, a reward. So we, we kind of notice how that feels and then we kind of remain with that feeling. And then also afterwards, uh, Siddhartha Gautama recommended that we reflect back on our good deeds. We can think of the, the things that we've done that day or even long ago as a way to enter into samadhi, just by recollecting the memory itself. This is part of a major theme in this course, which is that meditation, mental fitness are a lifestyle, and that everything we do impacts our minds. So the virtue, doing good, helping others, even in small little ways, this is both the result of a fit mind and the cause for it, the kind of fuel for our practice. So there's a common misconception that meditation is only about sitting still and being in a quiet place and kind of requiring this set of circumstances where you can remove all distractions. But actually in the ancient texts, and especially with this sequence that we've just described of transcendent dependent origination, it's talking about how meditation is also while moving around and it's the things we do. So virtue can lead us, can make the mind glad and lead it into this tranquil state. And so you imagine you, you've you just helped somebody out and the mind is like very bright and shining and aware and you stay with that feeling and, and then you're meditating right there and then as long as you're not kind of lost in your thoughts or lost in the tasks that you're doing, you're actually meditating while you're doing the good thing. And then you're getting so many benefits out of it and your mind is just kind of stable and with what you're doing. And one teacher calls this dynamic serenity. It's also been called stillness flowing. That's Ajahn Chah's phrase. And so you can think of this this mind that's like still, but there's things flowing through it. There's There can be thoughts too. There can be sights and sounds and whatever you're doing. Maybe you're, you know, eating or preparing food or even talking with a friend. And all that's kind of flowing through your mind, which has this shiny awareness there, just watching it all happily with a smile. So just to summarize with the four R's, the way that we practice here, both in the sitting meditation and everyday life, you can recognize with meta-awareness, basically how much turmoil selfish actions create in the mind, and recognize when the mind is caught up in kind of these repetitive selfish acts and and that gives you the opportunity to release so you release the self-centered thinking and actually in that moment it's almost like opening a fist you just allow your awareness to expand out and you relax your body and you can smile and that brings us to the third step which is relish now you enjoy a positive state of mind and doing a kind of selfless good act for for somebody else. And that will feel good. Then you can do the fourth R, which is to remain with that feeling. You can remain looking for people to help and kind of following your internal compass of, all right, what's the right thing to do? What's What's a good use of my time? How can I make the most of my kind of circumstances? How can I, how can I be helpful in the world? So today's daily challenge is for the next test that life throws at you to make the most virtuous possible decision. Now, I don't know about you, but I found that throughout the day, there's all these little tests. It's very small things. It could be like you have a choice of whether to share the last couple of cookies or take them for yourself, or maybe your parents are talking to you and you have this choice about whether to, you know, kind of rush to the next thing that you've got to do and blow them off or just take an extra moment to be patient and really be with them and enjoy that time so all these little things and and just to recognize and then release if if you're kind of headed down a direction that maybe isn't the right thing to do and then relish in making that good choice and this will this will help your mind be beautiful and bright and collected and then it'll also help later in your sitting meditation All right, have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow where we'll experience and talk about some of the deeper states of consciousness that all this can lead to.